gentlemen, I welcome you to Cyclone Football on HLTV Channel 15. Tonight we welcome you live from Merrill Field in Harlan, Iowa. We are under the Friday night lights on a hot, humid night. I am joined by Jonathan North, who will be on the camera, and I'm Brayton Schechinger, bringing you your play-by-play. -play. The number three ranked Lewis Central Titans travel to Merrill Field to play the number one ranked Harlan Community Cyclones in this non-district matchup. This is the season opener for both teams tonight, and this will be the best season opener across the state of Iowa. The Cyclones were class 3A runner-ups last season, and they lost to North Scott 30 to 6. Despite the fact that they lost in the 3A state championship game, the Cyclones had an amazing year going 11 and 1. Head coach Todd Blatt stated earlier this week that you get a little taste of success last year and a little bad taste at the end of the year. So those guys are wanting some redemption on that. But they are also a pretty smart bunch. They know that you don't start building pyramids from the top down. You've got to get some of that base done, and this is just one little piece that goes on that base. And we'll see if we can keep adding some stones. The Harlan Community Cyclones met the Titans on the turf two times last year. Both played at Merrill Field. And the Cyclones won both games 28-10 to and 21-14. The Titans have a sour taste in their mouth and are wanting to bounce back and win this one against the Cyclones. The Cyclones return this year with six All-Staters and 13 starting players from last season. The key tonight for the Titans is going to be limiting the pass game of the Cyclones. Last year, the Cyclones quarterback Tegan Kasperbauer had 2,553 yards over the air and 23 touchdowns. The key for the Cyclones is going to be limiting the turnovers. Last year, the Cyclones had 19 interceptions. Seven of them came from the state championship game. The key players for the Titans are Hunter Deo and Jonathan Humpel, both with Division I offers. Last season, Deo had 38 total tackles and 22.5 tackles for a loss at the defensive tackle position. Humple had 217 yards on the ground at running back and played a huge role on the defense at the cornerback position. The key players for the Cyclones are Connor Frame and Will McLaughlin. Frame recorded 44 receptions for 949 yards and 12 touchdowns. That is a touchdown for every four catches. McLaughlin recorded 70 total tackles and 12.5 for loss. He is also a talented receiving threat. Tonight's matchup is going to be an extraordinary game. Sit back and relax for this non-conference matchup between the Titans of Lewis Central and your Harlan Community Cyclones. It is senior night here at Merrill Field, so I'll go ahead and recognize the football seniors. Number two, Connor Frame. Number three, Joey Moser. Number four, Ashton Lyon. Number five, Luke Musage. Number nine, Nick Bloom. Number 10, Joseph Faw. Number 23, Will McLaughlin. Number 32, Lucas Stanley. Number 34 and 54, Jameson Beaker. Number 55, Jeremiah Davis. Number 56, Cade Brouillard. Number 60, Michael Barrett. Number 62, Josh Kinkle. Number 64, Dylan Gady. Number 65, Alex Munson. Number 66, Kemper Gordon. Number 68, Brett Wagaman. And number 72, Hugh Griffith. Cyclones and Titans met at the center of the field there. And we'll see who's going to be kicking and who will be receiving. Looks like the Cyclones are going to come onto the field and receive this one from the Titans. So that means at halftime, after halftime, the Titans will receive and the Cyclones will kick to them. Kicker for the Lewis Central Titan, Titans 
is number eight, Ethan Lee Master. Back deep to receive for the Cyclones. Number five, Luke Musage, and number three, Joey Moser, both seniors. Here we go to get this season kicked off. Lee Master with the kick, and that one goes out of the end, out of the end zone for a touchback. So no return for Joey Moser or Luke Musage on that one, and that will bring out the Cyclone offense, led by quarterback Tegan Casperbauer. Casperbauer is a junior this year. Last year, he was 143 for 278, making that percentage 51.4. He threw for 2,553 yards, and he had 23 touchdowns. Cyclones come out in the I formation. Will McLaughlin, the fullback. William Kinkle as a running back. Casper Bauer drops back in the po pocket, and it's intercepted. Number 15, Caleb Moore with the interception off the deflection. And the Cyclones offense will come off the field on the first play from scrimmage. Like I said in my introduction, the Cyclones really need to limit the turnovers. And they did not start off the season the way, the way they were hoping. So that will bring on the Titans offense led by quarterback Braylon Camerad. And they have tremendous field position here at the at their at the Cyclone 25 yard line. Camrad takes the snap, hands this one off to number, number one, Jonathan Humple. Humple on the outside, tackled by number six, Aiden Hall at the 20 yard line. A gain of five on the play. Cyclone defense was tremendous last year as they helped the Cyclones get to the dome. We'll see what they can do here penned at their own 20-yard line. Camrad rolls out to the right. Pressure coming there from Jamison Beaker. Camrad just rushes on the play. Gets swarmed by two Cyclone defenders, number 45, Zane Bendorf, and number 23, Will McLaughlin. And he gets five yards for a Titan first down. Defensive line for the Cyclones is Alex Munson at defensive end, Zane Bendorf defensive tackle, Jamison Beaker defensive tackle, and Will McLaughlin at defensive end. Motion by Lucy Fedoni. Camrad looking to the end zone, wide open. Lewis Central defense or Lewis Central receiver, and he underthrows him. Camrad's pass was intended for number seven, Wyatt Hatcher. Brings up second and ten for the Titans. Ten minutes and 43 seconds left to go in this first quarter. Camrad, shotgun formation. Hands this one off to Humple, and Humple swarmed by the Cyclone defense. A number of Cyclones get to him. Zane Bendorf. And 65, Alex Munson also on that tackle. Ace formation. Cyclone defender Will McLaughlin will jump, and that will be a penalty on the Cyclones.
So instead of it being third and 13, it will be third and eight now. Cyclones really need to limit the penalties, especially since they're backed up in their own territory. Camrad takes the snap, looks left, scrambles out, pressure gets to him, he releases it to Jonathan Humple. Jonathan Humple will take a hit from number 21. And he's going to be sure close to that first down. And you see the head official in that white cap signaling first down. First and goal for the Lewis Central Titans. Camrad hands this one off to Humple. Humple, gain of two on the play. And he's swarmed by a number of Cyclone defenders. Titans making substitutions. Bleachers are packed here at Merrill Field, Merrill Field for the home opener. Camrad sends Fedoni in motion, hands it right up the middle to Jonathan Humple. And Jonathan Humple will get into the end zone for a Titan touchdown. Touchdown Titans. And the Titans move the ball well on the Cyclones defense there. And it looks like the Titans will line up for PAT. Holder is Fedoni, and the kicker is number six, Boston Hensley, and that kick is up and good. Titans score first, seven to zero, with eight minutes and 58 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Cyclones are coached by head coach Todd Blatt. It's Assisted by Mark Cohorse, which is the offensive coordinator. Defensive coordinator, John Murta. Another defensive coordinator is Sam Brummer and James Carney. Those Cyclone coaches have had a lot of success over the years. They're hoping to keep that rolling this year and get back to the Dome for the second straight year in a row. This is the second time we'll see the Titans kicking off tonight. Back, to, back deep to return again is number three, Joey Moser, and number five, Luke Musage. Kicking from the 40-yard line is Hensley. Hensley with a line drive kick, low line drive. That one will get out of the end zone again for a touchback. So the Cyclones will receive the ball at the 20-yard line. Well, they start where they will start their second drive. Their first drive was capped off by a first play from scrimmage interception that was deflected and ended up in the hands of a Lewis Central defender. Cyclones send number 83 Jacob Birch in motion. 
Now they send William Kankel in motion. Cyclones sweep this one out to Aiden Hall. Aiden Hall got the outside, gets tripped up a little bit, stays on his feet, and he's going. He is moving for a gain of 18 yards on the play. Aiden Hall gets the outside. A nice run and good blocking by that stud offensive line. Good play call there from Mark Cohorse. Cyclones line up with two receivers to your far side. Handed up the middle to William Kankel, and William Kankel runs into a back, runs into the back of William McLaughlin, who is the fullback. A loss of one on the play. Cyclones break the huddle. Ace formation. Casper Bauer and Kinkle in the backfield. Casper Bauer drops back, delivers it to his right to Jacob Birch. Jacob Birch on the catch with the catch and picks up a gain of eight on the play, and that'll set up second and three. We'll see if the Cyclones can get some offense generated here. Hands it to William Kankel up the middle, and William Kankel gets tripped up. But it looks like it's going to be enough for the first down. And the signal is first down. First down, Cyclones. Connor Frame, wide receiver on the far side of your screen. Aiden Hall, close side. Looks for a quick slant to Frame. Frame going down the field and is batted down. Great defense by number three, Marcus Dukin. Duncan on the play. And we saw a lot of that last year. The deep routes there. And last year they really did connect for Tegan Kasperbauer and Connor Frame. They were one of the best Cyclone duos out there. Great defensive play there by Duncan. Read the ball the whole way. Cyclones come out, same formation. A little screen here to Aiden Hall, quick screen. Aiden Hall levels his shoulder into a Lewis Central defender. Number six, Boston Hensley will go ahead and bump Hall out of bounds. Hall gains seven yards on the play. Cash Brower drops back, looks to his right, delivers a short pass there to Will McLaughlin. And it was a little high for Will McLaughlin to come down with, and that brings up fourth down. Big decision here for coach, for head coach Todd Blatt. Ball is at the Lewis Central 45-yard line, and it looks like they are switching formations. And number eight, Stephen Linen, is on the field. So that's a pretty good indicator that this is going to be a punt. Cyclones didn't have the right personnel on the field. Now get the right personnel on the field, so they have 11. Good punt there by Steven Linen, and that one will go inside the 10-yard line, trickle all the way down to the 5-yard line. Excellent punt by Steven Linen. Pens the Titans back at their own 5-yard line.
Titans bring their offense back onto the field. Their first drive was capped off by a touchdown. Run up the middle by Jonathan Humple. And we'll see if the Cyclone defense can stop him here. Hands it off to Humple again. Humple has a wide open area. Brad Kern's the first one to get a hit on Humple. And two other Cyclones come in to finish it off. Cyclones lost a lot of key players from last year. They lost two All-Staters, Jacob Schechinger and Jesse Schwery. And also lost some defensive and offensive threats. This one's a read option. Camrad it gets stumped there by the Iowa State commit, Will McLaughlin. And Will McLaughlin said, if I can't take one of you, I'll take both of you. Squared him up and... Camrad had no idea what to do with the football. Camrad drops back in the pocket, delivers a strike to his right. That's delivered to Braden Lofton, and Braden Lofton gets leveled by number 21, Garrett Osman. Lofton is a is the uh, Kansas State commit for Lewis Central. There's a number of Division One athletes on the Lewis Central squad, and there's another there's a lot that have D Division One offers. <clears throat> Camrad in the shotgun formation. Pressure's coming, gets to him, and that one's overthrown. Looks like Will McLaughlin might have got a little bit of his face mask, but it's not going to be called by the head official. That was pretty clear that McLaughlin got all of his face mask, but a no call here. The Cyclones will take that. Brings up second and ten. Camrad looks to his left. Pressure from Beaker. Beaker hits him. But Camrad somehow gets that one off. A little bit wobbly. But it is passes connected to number 13, Curtis Witt. Camrad got leveled by Beaker. And he comes up a little bit slow. See him moving his face mask around. Jamison Beaker's just letting him know that it's game time and he's ready to play. Camrad looks to his right quick. Oh, almost picked off there. Screen by the Lewis Central Titans. Number 21, Garrett Osman, almost gets off of his block. And he could have took that one to the house. Only thing that was in front of him was the turf. Gain of four on the play from the screen. Titans are taking their time moving the ball as the clock has now trickled down to three minutes and 55 seconds. Since Witt into motion, Camrad looking, has all sorts of time and delivers the ball to Witt on the right sideline for a gain of four on the play. Titans are at their own 43-yard line. Cyclones need a big stop here. They go to the hard count on two. Cyclone defense is very well disciplined, and they do not jump. Titans call an audible. Camera all alone back in the pocket, delivers a strike over the middle of the field to Braylon Lofton. 
Lofton is going to take this one all the way down to the two-yard line. Braden Lofton. Camrad doesn't have to look very far for him as he is 6'5". Six five and cutting across the middle of the field, you can't miss that. Cyclones are pinned at their own goal line again. Lofton hands this one off up the middle to number thirty, Elijah Sunderman, and Sunderman gets wrapped up. And as I said before, there is a big crowd here, and there's some rain that is coming down. I don't think it was forecasted, but the crowd is scrambling, and this one's going to be a quarterback sneak up the middle. And Camrad gets into the end zone on the quarterback sneak. Good push there from the fullback and the running back as he gets into the end zone. The Cyclones need to keep their head high here. There's still a lot of game left to play. Still three quarters and two minutes and 52 seconds left to play. Hensley on to kick this one and this one's up and good. Boston Hensley puts the Lewis Central Titans at 14 to zero. You're watching HLTV on channel 15. We'll be right back after the break. Programming brought to you by these great sponsors. Clark Arnhold State Farm Insurance and Financial. Keast Motors. Quick RX Pharmacy. Cyclone Lanes. Shelby County State Bank. United Bank of Iowa. Holly Jones Funeral Homes, KNOD Radio, Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance, and the Peterson Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex. on HL TV channel 15 as the Titans will get ready to kick off again third time kicking off in the first quarter that's not what the Cyclones wanted to happen back deep to return Musage and Moser Moser has tremendous speed and so does Musage if they get a return they could be dangerous get a good chunk of yardage and this one is going to go out of the end zone again by a good five yards Boston Hensley the kicker for Lewis Central Titans and he's done a pretty good job for the Titans tonight So the Cyclones will come onto the field again for their third drive in the first quarter and of the game. Cyclones' first drive was an interception, and their second drive they had to punt the ball away. Casper Bauer goes to the hard count, and number 71, Gunnar Schmitz, is going to jump on that one. So false start offense. And that'll move him back three yards. Five yards. You wonder if this rain's going to have any factor on the pass game of the Cyclones as that ball could be slick. Gasparow takes the snap, hands this one off to William Kenkel, and Kenkel's leveled. 
Number seven, Wyatt Hatcher on the tackle for the Titans. Kinkle gets back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll bring up second and 15. Cyclones come out, empty backfield, trips right. Casper Bauer looking to the right, delivers to the right, and that one's almost picked off as Casper Bauer threw that right over a Lewis Central defender. Got tipped and almost landed in another Titans' hands. And that one could have been dangerous. Casper Bowers' intended receiver was Jacob Birch, number 83. Running a curl on the play. Another empty backfield. Titans defense looks to be confused. Same play, and this one gets delivered to Jacob Birch. Jacob Birch hauls that one in, and that's enough for a Cyclone first down. Cyclones said, we're going to go with the same play, see if it works this time, and they executed that time very well. Now the Cyclones come out in the I formation, hand this one to the fullback, Will McLaughlin. Will McLaughlin puts his shoulder down, and he's wrapped up by number seven, Wyatt Hatcher. Brings up second and six on the play. Cyclones must be wanting to pass here. Looks like they might go with the screen to the left side. They deliver it to the left side to number 83, Jacob Birch. He takes a hit but maintains possession. Jacob Birch with his second first down of the game. Birch took a shot there, but hangs on to it. Casper Bauer hands this one off to Will McLaughlin, who goes up the middle for a gain of one on the play. Cyclones really like running 46 45 lead right off of the offensive tackle. They like running it up the middle too. Clock's winding down. 12 seconds left to go in the first quarter and the Cyclones look, that, look like they're going to take this one. Yep, and they're just going to go ahead and go to the sideline and you know, talk about the first quarter, talk it over, see what they need to do better, and see what they're doing good on. The rain has stopped at Merrill Field here, so that will allow for more passing options. That's the end of your first quarter here at Merrill Field. Lewis Central Titans 14, your Harlan Community Cyclones 0. We'll be right back. You're watching HLTV on Channel 15. Welcome back, Cyclone fans, to HLTV on Channel 15. Harlan Community Cyclones are taking on the Lewis Central Titans. And at the end of the first quarter, the score is 14 to 0 in favor of the Titans. Cyclones switch fields, switch ends on the field. Second and nine, ball will be placed 
at the 46 yard line. Cyclones come out, trips right, Moser, Birch, and Hall on the right side, frame closest to your screen. They go with the hard count. Casper Bauer looking to his right, delivers to his right, and delivers to no one, but his intended receiver was number 83, Jacob Birch. Cyclone's first drive was intercepted, and that was a first play from scrimmage. Not the way they wanted to start off this game. They moved the ball a little bit on their second drive, but ended up punting it at the 46-yard line of the Lewis Central Titans. And this is their third drive. They're moving it nice and slowly. And this one... Cash Brower rolls out to his right, throws it up to Connor Frame. Connor Frame with a sliding catch. And that one's enough to pick up with the first down. But there is a flag on the far side of the field. Flag is right where the line of scrimmage would be on the far side. And we'll see what the call is from the uh, official. And it is going to be an ineligible receiver downfield on the Cyclones. That one's going to hurt the Cyclones for sure. They had a first down, and that backs them up. Now they have a third and 17. Connor Frame was slow to get up on that last play, and he came off the field. Hopefully it just knocked the wind out of them because that's the last person we need off of the field. Cyclones come rushing out as there's three seconds on the play clock. They need to get this one off. They barely get it off in time. Nope, we're going to have a, a timeout. By head coach Todd Platt, the Cyclones looked, it appeared as they got the snap off in time, but they're going to go ahead and waste a timeout here instead of taking another five yards and pushing them back to third and 20. This is a season opener for the Cyclones. And the Cyclones... Cyclones are ranked number one in the Class 3A, and the Lewis Central Titans are ranked number three in 4A. This winter, there was a change in classes, and the Cyclones stayed at 3A while the Titans got moved up to 4A, so they are no longer in each other's district. Cyclones next game will be next week September 3rd against Grinnell that one's at Grinnell and they'll play uh, Sergeant Bluff Luton at Sergeant Bluff so they have a tough schedule coming up for the next few weeks here out of the timeout the Cyclones come in the shotgun formation Casper looks to his right, delivers to his right. This one's going to be a jump ball to Jacob Birch. Jacob Birch hauls it in, and he's going to pick up a nice gain. And he gets down all the way to the 21-yard line. Casper Bauer throws a jump ball, and Jacob Birch is able to jump up for that one and take it away from the Lewis Central defender. And that's going to bring a first and 10. Cyclones are in the red zone. Cyclones hand this one off to number seven, Brad Curran. And Curran swallowed up for a gain of nothing on the play. Brad Curran comes in on 
a few personnel on the offense at running back, and he also plays uh, Rover on defense. Cyclones will see what they can do now with second and ten. Casper Bauer sends Hall in motion. This one's going to be a toss out to the left side. Will McLaughlin has some running room on the left side. And he gets all the way down to the eight-yard line for a Cyclone first down. McLaughlin hurdled the Lewis Central defender. Got down all the way to the seven-yard line. Cyclones have a lot of two-way players, which means they play offense and defense. So that might tire them out as the game goes on. This one's handed off up the middle. Number 32, Lucas Stanley. And Stanley is tackled at the six-yard line, and that will bring up second and goal. Cyclones looking to punch this one in. The Cyclones get number 18, Dallas Davis, to jump, and that will move them ahead. The Cyclone, Cyclones might think about running this one right up the middle. It's going to be a half the distance to the goal, so that will move them up to the third yard line, three yard line. Second and goal from the three-yard line. Cash Brower comes out in the eye formation. Hands this one up right up the middle to Will McLaughlin. Will McLaughlin is tackled by a number of Lewis Central defenders. Nick Miller, Hunter Dale are the two on the tackle. Third and goal from the two-yard line. Cyclones trying to capitalize on this long drive. Casper Bauer hands this one up the middle of the McLaughlin. Same play. And instead of gaining one this time, they lose two. Take them one step forward and, a two, and two steps back. That's going to bring up fourth down. And I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Cohorse and Coach Blatt would go for this one inside the five-yard line. And they bring the offense onto the field. Fourth and goal. Cyclones needing to capitalize. Bring Hall in motion. Cash Brower still has a ball. Looks wide open receiver is Will McLaughlin. And Will McLaughlin goes into the end zone for a Cyclone touchdown. Touchdown Cyclones. Well executed play there by the Cyclone offense. And that is their first touchdown of the year and first touchdown of the game. Cyclones line up for the PAT. Brad Curran, number seven, is a holder. And number eight, Steven Linen, is the kicker. Linen handles all the kicking duties. He's also the punter for the Cyclones, and we'll see what he can do here. First kick all season. Snaps good, holds good, and the kick is right up the uprights. Cyclones on the board. It's now 14 to seven in favor of the Titans. Titans may have the lead, but right now the Cyclones have the momentum. They need to keep on rolling with the momentum.
Cyclones bring the kicking team onto the field. Steven Leinen is going to kick this one off, and this is the first time in the game that the Titans are going to be receiving a kick. Titans will get it at the start of the third quarter. Back deep to return. Number one, Jonathan Humple, and it looks like number 11, Fedoni. This is a good kick, and this one's going to go out of the end zone for a touchback. Great kick there by Steven Leinen. So that will bring out the Lewis Central Titan offense. Titans have had two drives so far, and they've both resulted in touchdowns. Titans offense is led by their quarterback, Braylon Camrad, and he is also the son of the head coach, Justin Camrad. This one's going to be handed up the middle to Jonathan Humple. Humple finds a little bit of running room, and he's going to gain a four yards on the play. Cyclone cornerbacks. Our number four, Ashton Lyon, and number 24, Will Newharth. Shotgun formation, they go with a hard count. The Titans see that number 10, Joseph Fall, is going to go ahead and bring the blitz there from the right side. And Camrad points that out, and they do bring the blitz. And they can't do anything about it. Joseph Faw gets to Braylon Camrad. They went on two for a reason to see who, who was going to blitz, if anyone would jump. And they saw Joseph Faw going in that A gap. So the running back picked him up. Running back couldn't do anything about it. Faw got to the quarterback for the first sack of the season. Third and 11. Cyclones looking for a stop here. Titans come out, trips right. Empty backfield, and it's a screen. A well-executed screen there by the Titans, but they're not going to pick up the first down. They're going to be short by three yards. It's going to bring up fourth down, and we'll see what head coach Justin Camrad is going to do now. So it looks like he's going to bring the punt team on, but you never want to guess that the punt team is not going to fake it. And that happened a few times to the Cyclones last year. And the Lewis Central Titans are going to go ahead and call a timeout here as the play clock was running down. It was at five seconds. I don't think they had the right personnel. Maybe they were missing a person. Something was wrong. So they go ahead and call a timeout. And that's what you usually see during the beginning of the season. Players not knowing, forgetting that they're on the punt team or that they're on the PAT team. I'm going to take a quick break here. You're watching HLTV Channel 15. Programming brought to you by these great sponsors. Clark Arnhold State Farm Insurance and Financial. Keast Motors. Quick RX Pharmacy. Cyclone Lanes. Shelby County State Bank. United Bank of Iowa. Holly Jones Funeral Homes, KNOD Radio, 
Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance, and the Peterson Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex. back now bringing you cyclone football live on hl tv channel 15 and the back deep to return is mosier and musage once again punting is number two lane farrell and this one bounces all the way to the 26 yard line as the cyclone Returners, Moser and Musage, it went over their heads and they were not able to return it. Pretty good punt there by Pharrell. Cyclones will come on for their fourth drive. See if they can capitalize it like they did the last drive and end up with another touchdown. Five minutes, 22 seconds. Left to go in the second quarter. Casper Bauer takes a snap, looks to his left. Gonna deliver this one to Connor Freeman. There's a lot of contact there. A lot of contact there. Surprised there's not a flag. On the coverage is number three, Marcus Duncan. And he never turned his head and he ran into Connor Frame. As you see the sideline of the Cyclones on that last play, they were looking for the flag too. Cyclones come out, trips left, send Moser in motion. Looks to the left, gonna be a little screen play here to Hall. Hall's got the outside and he's got some speed. He's gonna go ahead and get the first down for the Cyclones and he's gonna pick up a nice gain of 10 yards on the play. Cyclones, first and 10 from the 40 yard line. Casper Brown back in the pocket, pressure comes. He delivers this one, another jump ball to Jacob Birch and Jacob Birch almost hauls that one in. Casper Bauer throwing a lot of jump balls here in the first half and Todd Blatt is looking for another flag. He thought there was a little bit too much contact there. See him on the sideline asking the ref. There's a flag down on the field, but they get that picked up. I don't think that was supposed to be there. Casper Bauer drops back, looks to his right, delivers to his right, and this one's deflected. Aiden Hall. Aiden Hall gets up slow on the play. Coverage by the Titans there. Four minutes, 56 seconds left on your Clark Arnholtz State Farm scoreboard. Casper Bauer drops back, pressure comes. Casper Bauer lets it go. This one's delivered to number 83, Jacob Birch. And it is an unsuccessful pass, but there is a flag down at the 48-yard line. And the indication is pass interference on the defense. 
And that is what the Cyclone head coach, Todd Blatt, has been looking for for the past two plays here. Pass interference on the defense is the call. And that'll be enough for a first down from the Cyclones. Cyclones change their personnel. Casper Bauer under center. And the Cyclones jump. Going with a hard count again. And number 72, Hugh Griffith, jumps on the play. They move ahead. Now they move back five yards. It's now first and... 15 for the Cyclones as they're digging themselves a hole, but hopefully they'll be able to get out of it here. Cash per hour. Drops back in the pocket. Pump fakes, and that one gets batted down by number 72, Hunter Dale. Puts both of his big paws up. Knocks that one down. New personnel on the field for the Cyclone as we see Brad Curran and Joey Moser trot onto the field. Moser's going to be next to Casper Bauer in the backfield. They go trips left. And the Cyclones have con some confusion on the play. And they're going to have to burn a timeout here. Cyclones, a lot of confusion on the play. That's their second timeout they've had to use in the first half. So they have one left. Take a short break here. You're watching Cyclone Football on HLTV Channel 15. We are back bringing you live coverage from Merrill Field. Cyclones, second and 15 here from the 50 yard line. Cyclones get everything figured out there and it looks like instead of going trips left, they'll go trips right now. Send Hall into motion on the left side. Casper Brower looks Hall's way and he's gonna deliver it to Hall. Aiden Hall almost hauls that one in. She can't come up with it. Number three, Duncan on the coverage. And that's a few times that Duncan has clutched up for the Titans. Cash for Bowers, Ian Hall, that whole route. Four minutes, 41 seconds left in the second quarter. Casper Bauer, shotgun formation. Drops back in the pocket. Looks left, delivered high. That one should have been caught, should have been delivered. Casper Bauer delivers that one a little bit too high out of the reach of frame. He can't come up with that one. So that'll bring up fourth and 15. Cyclones look like they bring the punt team onto the field. Linen's second punt of the evening, his first punt, was inside the five yard line. And he's looking to do that here again. Punt is a high kick. And it's fair caught. He muffs it. Fedoni muffs it, but he gets right back on it once again.
seeing a little commotion there on the Cyclone sideline. Nick Miller got ran over by William Kenkel. Miller gets up and starts talking. It looks like the official warned him there. No penalty, just a warning. So the Titans come back out. This is the Titans fourth drive of the evening. Titans will run this one up the middle. Humple will gain a nice yard, will gain nine nice yards on the play. Offensive linemen doing a nice job of opening the hole. And the Titans go no huddle here. Camrad hands this one off again to Humple. Humple makes a man miss. And he is going to get hit by Brad Curran. Brad Curran gets, a, gets help from a few other Cyclone defenders. Cyclones wearing their all red uniforms. Titans in white. Titans go two receivers <clears throat> to the near side, one to the far side. Camrad takes this snap, looks to his left, now looks to his right, and wide open is Braden Lofton. And Camrad overthrows what would have been a touchdown. Big mistake there by Camrad. 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six, five, Lofton running down the field. Coverage by Ashton Lyon. And overthrows him. Titans will line up in the same formation. Cyclones. Defense has been okay so far, and Camrad's going to keep this one. He's got a lot of running room to the left side. Camrad keeps on going. Flag is down. Back in the backfield. Camrad at the 20, the 15, and the 10, and gets hit by Aiden Hall. There's a flag, and this one looks to be coming back. Hunter Dale. Will McLaughlin get into it, and I think this one will be coming back. Yep, and holding on Hunter Dale. So this one will come back all the way to the 20-yard line. Justin Camrad, head coach for the Lewis Central Titans, looking for an explanation over there. Dale was laying on McLaughlin in the backfield. Dale had, or McLaughlin had 300 pounds laying on him. Camera at shotgun formation. Read option delivers this one on the sweep to Jonathan Humple and Humple's wrapped up at the 20, at the 19 yard line. That brings up a third and long 16 yards. Cyclones making some defensive substitutions. Trips right. Three receivers to the right. Camrad surveys the field. And the Cyclones, Brad Curran with the hit on the play instantly. And he keeps them from getting the first down. Pass was caught by Blake Cyborn.
This brings up fourth and three. Titans leave the offense out there. They're going to go for this. Cyclones need a big stop. It looks like the Titans are just getting them to jump here. They still have 15 seconds left on the play clock. They're getting the audible from Coach Justin Camrad. And it looks like they're not going to snap the ball here as the play clock winds down to zero. Timeout. It's called by the Titans. Fourth and three on the play. And that was a smart decision there from head coach Justin Camrad as he let the play clock dwindle down to, to zero. And the, uh, the game clock went down to one minute and 39 seconds. So the Cyclones have what is called a two-minute offense. They all have, all offensive members have wristbands and they call out a number and they look at their wristband and they know exactly what the play is. So it's no huddle offense. And we'll see if we see this here. Bleachers are packed on both sides tonight. And that was expected. And it looks like the punt team for the Titans is going to come on. Number two, Lane Fearfield is on to punt this one away. Back deep to receive is number seven, Brad Curran. And this one's going to be a fake. They're running it right up the right side. They have enough for the first down. They got the first down by about seven yards there. The Cyclones were not expecting that. And the defense will stay on the field. Unfortunate event there for the Cyclones. So Cameron and the offense will come back onto the field. A one-on-one -on -one coverage on the left side of the field. And he looks to the left. Pressure comes from Stanley, and Stanley gets to the quarterback to force an incompletion. Second and 10 for the Titans. One minute, 29 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Camrad surveys the field, is gonna deliver this one to Lofton over the middle of the field. And Lofton Shakes one defender and gets brought down by number 32, Lucas Stanley. And the Titans are going to go ahead and go no huddle here. Humple and Camrad in the backfield. Another read option and Humple gets smothered by Garrett Osmond. Second and five for the Titans. They get the play call from the sideline. Two receivers each way. Camrad, pressure comes from number 10, Joseph Fall. Ashton Lyon on the coverage, and it's caught. 
It's caught by number four, Blake Cyborn. It was in Lyon's hands, and Cyborn ripped it away from Ashton Lyon. And that is a big play for the Titans right before halftime, as there's now 30 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Another read option. I'm going to run it to the left here. Lyon tries to trip him up. Camrab falls into the end zone for a Titan touchdown. Third touchdown of the night for the Titans offense. That'll bring the PAT unit on to the field. Gage Somerville is a snapper. Fedoni the holder. And Hensley the kicker. Oh, and that snap is bad. Hits the floor. It's delivered for a two-point conversion, though. And this Titans luck out there. Makes the score 22 to seven in favor of the Titans with 17 seconds left before halftime hits. Titans have converted three of their four drives tonight. Cyclones have converted one of their four drives tonight. And they'll be getting the ball back here. 17 seconds left to go. Titans get ready to kick this one away. Hensley has kicked it out of the end zone on all of his kicks tonight. Back deep is Musage and Moser once again. Hensley lines up at the 30 yard line and will trot to the 40 yard line here. And he'll kick this one away. This one's kicked in play here. Moser will have a chance to return this one. Moser on the right side. And he's going to get tackled at the 30-yard line. Smart decision there by Coach Camrad. Says kick it short, waste some time off the clock. So the Cyclone offense will come out onto the field. And with only 10 seconds left, I wouldn't be surprised if they kneeled it here. Took a knee. That's exactly what they do. Cash Brow goes under center, takes a knee. That will be the end of the uh, first half. Now I have halftime here. Cyclones are trying to execute better on offense after they got to a after they got off to a slow start. Interception on the first play from scrimmage. Defense has been doing a well job, a good job at containing the Titans for the most part. And the Titans have been taking their time driving the ball downfield. Score is 22 to seven in favor of the Titans. And we'll be back with more Cyclone football. You are watching HLTV Channel 15. Programming brought to you by these great sponsors. Clark Arnholt State Farm Insurance and Financial. Keith Motors. 
Quick RX Pharmacy. Cyclone Lanes. Shelby County State Bank. United Bank of Iowa. Holly Jones Funeral Homes. KNOD Radio. Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance. And the Peterson Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex. We're back live on HLTV channel 15 as the Cyclones kick that one away to the Lewis Central Titans. I guess they didn't have a whistle there on the last play. Coming back from halftime, starting the third quarter. Scores 22 to 7 in favor of the Titans. Mine and on to kick this one for the Cyclones. Good kick, and this one's going to end up in the end zone, so it's not going to be returnable for the Titans. So the Titans offense will come back onto the field. Led by Camrad. <clears throat> Camrad lines up in the shotgun formation. Sends wide receiver in motion. They're going to go ahead and go with the screen here. And he gets lit up by Aiden Hall. Aiden Hall drags him down. And he's going to get a gain of one on the play. Some first half statistics for you. The Cyclones had three penalties for 15 yards. And the Titans also had three penalties for 28 yards. The Titans have nine first downs. And the... Cyclones had six in the first half. Camrad takes a snap, looks to his right, now to his left, airs it out to the left to Lofton. Lofton cannot get this one. Coverage by number two, Connor Frame. Casper Bauer in the first half went seven for nine, one interception. Laughlin had the only touchdown for the Cyclones. Camrad drops back. Nice spin move by McLaughlin, almost gets him. Camrad rushes out, reaches the ball out. Good pressure by McLaughlin there, but Camrad still picks up a little bit. A little bit of yardage on the play, but not enough for the first down. Number 34, Jamison Beaker on the tackle. First time I've called Beaker's name for a solo tackle all night. This will bring up fourth down. Punt unit will come on. 
punting for the Lewis Central Titans is number two, Lane Furfell. And back deep to receive is Joey Moser and Luke Musage. Moser fields this one, and he didn't fair catch it. The Titans get fooled. Moser on the left side. Moser never fair caught. He never signaled for fair catch. And the referees are saying that he signaled fair catch. Looked like from up here that he never signaled fair catch, but ref says he saw fair catch called for. Moser had a lot of running room out to his left. That could have been a big play if it wasn't called back. Cyclone offense comes out onto the field. Led by Teagan Casper Bauer. Like I said, went seven for nine in the first half. One interception. Casper Bauer is going to hand this one off to McLaughlin and nothing going for the Cyclone run game. Cyclones are going to have to refer to the pass game because their run game is not working against this Lewis Central defense. Asper Bauer under center. Goes a hard count on two. Screen to Aiden Hall. Aiden Hall out to the right side. He had some running room there. And a nice gain of five on the play. That'll bring up third and five from the 28 yard line. Looks like we have a Titan that is shook up on the play. As the Merchu Medical uh, sport, sport trainers are going to uh, come out onto the field. Coach Blatt is making his way across the field. And it is a cyclone that is down on the far sideline. It looked like a Titan was shaking up, but it is a cyclone. It's a far ways over there, so at the moment I'm not able to see what number it is. They're lifting that right leg, so it looks like it's just a cramp. Give him some pickle juice and send him on his way. We'll let the sport medics do their thing as they get the Cyclone player back on his feet. And we'll be right back on HLTV Channel 15. We're back live on HLTV Channel 15. The Cyclone that was down on the far sideline was number six, Aiden Hall. And that's a person that the Cyclones do not want to see go down as he's a big part to both the offense and the defense. Plays a variety of positions. And he's an excellent receiver for the Cyclones. So hopefully it's just a cramp and he'll be back out there. Otherwise that's going to be a significant loss for the Cyclones. Casper Bauer. Trying to get something generated on offense here on third down. Looks to his left. Completed to Connor Frame. Connor Frame gets wrapped up by four or five Lewis Central defenders. None of them can bring him down, and that'll be enough for a Cyclone first down. Cyclones with their first first down of the third quarter. Casper Bauer under center. 
Fakes a handoff play action here. Looks to his right to Connor Frame. Connor Frame was open. And Casper Bauer leads him too much. Passes incomplete on the far sideline. It'll be second and 10 from the 37 yard line. Casper Bauer, shotgun formation. Two receivers on each side of him. Sends Moser in motion. Casper Bauer looks that way. Looks back to his left. It's a screen to Brad Curran. Brad Curran makes a few guys miss. He's out to the left side. All the way to the outside. He's at the 35 and goes out of bounds. And that'll, that should be a late hit. And it is. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. And Brad Curran will gain a substantial amount of yards, and that's what the Cyclones needed, some momentum there. Yep, personal foul, late hit on the Titans. Something that the Titans don't want to have there. I don't move the ball up. 15 yards. The Cyclones will be inside the red zone now. Play of about 30 yards turns into 45 yards. And the Cyclones are now down to the 19 yard line. Casper Bauer, alone back there, looks to William Kenkel, Kenkel hauls it in. William Kenkel hauls it in at the three yard line. And the Cyclones are now moving the ball. Two passes in a row, been big gains of yardage. First and goal from the three yard line. Cyclones looking to capitalize on the long drive. Eight minutes, 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Casper Bauer hands this one off to fullback. William Kankel. Kankel is stuffed short of the goal line. Looks to be at the one yard line. Cyclones trying to cap off. This is a great drive. I formation. Hands it to the fullback, William Kankel. Kankel's into the end zone for a Cyclone touchdown. Touchdown, Cyclones. Casper Bauer hands it up the middle. And the Cyclones are on the board. And the Cyclones strike first in the second half. Now the PAT unit will come on for the Cyclones. Snapper number 71, Gunnar Schmitz. Holder number 7, Brad Curran. And kicker number 8, Steven Linen. Doesn't look like they have the right personnel. He gets in there. Two seconds, one second. One second left to go on the play clock. They get it off, and it goes right through the uprights. Cyclone offense is able to capitalize there on the long drive. They stop the Lewis Central Titans on their first drive in the third quarter and they drive the ball all the way down the field big plays coming from the screen pass 
Casper Bauer connected with Brad Curran. Curran took it for a gain of 30 yards. He then got a late hit called on the Titans, so that moved it 15 yards. A play was then 45 yards. Next play from scrimmage was a pass that was converted to William Kinkle. That got the Cyclones down to the three yard line. And from there, William Kinkle finished it off with two runs up the middle. Lining on to kick this one away. And this one's gonna land right in the middle of the end zone. So that's gonna be a touchback. And Linen's kick kicks have all been touchbacks this evening. Cyclones have all the momentum right now. They're gonna try to keep it that way. Linebackers for the Cyclones this evening is Garrett Osmond, number 21. Number 32, Lucas Stanley. Number 10, Joseph Fall. Back at safety, number 7, Brad Curran. And the Titans are going to jump here. It looked like it was number 72, Hunter Dale, that jumped. Tried the hard count coming out. First play from scrimmage. And that is a call offside on the offense. I'm moving back five yards. And right now the penalties from the Titans have been kicking them in the butt. So the Titans will begin this drive first and 15 at their own 15 yard line. Humple in motion and they jump again. The Titans are just jumping on offense. And that'll move him back another five yards. Number 65 jumped that time, and that is Hunter Waldstein. Titans are now really kicking themselves in the butt. As it's now first and 20 for, from them from their own 10 yard line. Camrad hands this one up the middle to Humple. Humple will get three yards back. And it looks like there's a cyclone slow to get up. That Jameson Beaker comes up with a little bit of a, a limp. But being friends with Jameson Beaker, he's a tough guy. Titans, second and 17. Camrad, back in shotgun formation. Looks to his left, delivers to his left on a screenplay to Jonathan Humple. Humple gets hit first by... Number nine, Nick Bloom. And then got hit by number 20... Three Will McLaughlin. Cyclones, Titans, third and eleven from their own nineteen yard line. Camera back in the pocket, surveys the field. Pressure's coming from Will McLaughlin. Will McLaughlin hits Camera, and it's almost picked off by Connor Frame. Connor Frame is there to knock it away. Great defensive execution from the Cyclones as the Cyclones have all the momentum right now. Brings up fourth and 11. Camrad, slow to get up on that last hit from Will McLaughlin, who put the pressure on him. Punt is away. 
Back deep to return is Moser and Musage, and this one takes a Harlem bounce. It bounces back to the Lewis Central side, and they don't get it down until the 46-yard line. The ball is now in favor of the Harlem Community Cyclones. They are already inside Lewis Central territory. And the official is calling for an official timeout, two-minute official timeout. Your score is 22 to 14. Lewis Central in control. But they are not in control of the momentum. As the Harlan Community Cyclones have all the momentum. You're watching Cyclone Football on HLTV Channel 15. Programming brought to you by these great sponsors. Clark Arnhold State Farm Insurance and Financial. Keith Motors. Quick RX Pharmacy. Cyclone Lanes, Shelby County State Bank, United Bank of Iowa, Holly Jones Funeral Homes, KNOD Radio, Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance, and the Peterson Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex. We're back at Merrill Field. You're watching HLTV Channel 15. And the Cyclones offense take the field at the Lewis Central 45 yard line. And they're starting their sixth drive of the ball game. Casper Bauer surveys the field, looks to the right, wide open. It looks like it is Brad Curran. Brad Curran with the catch. And it's a good gain of eight yards. Cyclones pass game. Working out well for him at the moment, so why stop it? Second and two. Cyclones down by eight. Frame and Newharth, closest receivers to your screen. Cyclones go with a hard count. Hand this one off to number 23, Will McLaughlin, and Will McLaughlin gets stuffed. Tackle for a loss. And as I said before, the run game just ain't working for the Cyclones. Having a hard time getting anything going. The one big run that they did get was a sweep on the outside to Aiden Hall. And Aiden Hall went down two drives ago. And he's on the sideline, walking the sideline right now. So he's not back out there for the Cyclones, but right now the Cyclones are doing fine without him. Casper Bauer in the shotgun formation. Drops back, looks to his right, delivers this one to Jacob Birch. Jacob Birch takes a few hits, and he gets all the way to the 28-yard line, and there's a shaken up Lewis Central defender on the field. And it looks like he's got a cramp in his right leg. That is Wyatt Hatcher. Wyatt Hatcher was the first to initiate contact on Jacob Birch. Birch wiggled his way free from a few defenders. That puts the Cyclones first and 10 at the 28 yard line. We will let the medic team do their thing once again. We'll be right back on HLTV Channel 15. Welcome back to Cyclone Football on HLTV Channel 15. Wyatt Hatcher gets up, goes to the sideline. And that brings the Cyclone offense back onto the field. Casper Bauer and Kenkel. 
in the backfield. Shotgun formation. Casper Bauer looking to his left. Now looks to his right. Lobs it up to the right. Jump ball to Aiden Hall. Aiden Hall with an amazing catch on the right side. But he's out of bounds. Barely out of bounds is Aiden Hall. And he comes up limping once again as he was just out of the ball game. And it appears that he's going to have to come back out if he's limping that bad. Aiden Hall with amazing athleticism. Just needed a few more inches. And that would have been complete as he laid out for that one on the right side in double coverage. Almost came up with it. Cash Brower drops back once again. Pressure coming on the right side. Delivers this one to Connor Frame. Passes incomplete. That was Brad Curran. Pass is incomplete, a little too high for Brad Curran. Brad Curran is 5'10 junior. That ball was thrown at about 6'5. Got his fingertips on it, and that's all he could do with it. Curran is a two-way player, plays safety for the Cyclones also on defense. Third and ten. Four minutes, 30 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Casper Bauer rolls out of the pocket. Looks to his right. Pass is complete to number two, Connor Frame. Connor Frame trying to reach for that first down, but he's not going to be able to pick it up. He's going to be two yards short. And now the decision for Coach Mark Cohorse and Coach Todd Blatt. Steven Linen is a 4.5 star kicker. Will he send him on, or will the offense stay on and try to pick up the first down? Looks like the offense is still out on the field. Fourth and two. Cyclones needing to get a big conversion. Casper Bauer drops back. Over the middle of the field, the Connor frame. Heavy pressure. Almost looked like a pass interference, but no flag on the play. It looked like the contact came before the ball even touched Connor frame. No flag on the play. It's going to be a turnover on downs. And that'll be first and ten for the Titans. Unfortunate events for the Cyclones as they will stay down by eight. Camrad brings the Lewis Central Titan offense back onto the field. Hands this one off to Humple in the middle. Humple with some running room. Spins away from Brad Curran. And he finally gets tackled at the 39-yard line by what looks to be number 34, Jamison Beaker. Correction, number 23, Will McLaughlin. And number 24, Will Newharth. Titans with a big play there. Looking to do the same here. Handoff again to Jonathan Humple. Zane Bendorf trying to drag him down. And he gets wrapped up at the 39 yard line. Brings up second and seven. Camrad takes a snap. Pressure coming from McLaughlin. A wide open Braden Lofton over the middle of the field. And he runs into his own guy. Almost gets leveled by his own guy. And he's then wrapped up. If he didn't run into number 13, Curtis Witt, he could have been in the end zone right now.
Titans go no huddle here. Camrad, read option, hands this one off to Humple once again, and the defensive line swarms to Humple, wraps him up for a gain of one on the play. Titans have had two drives here in the third quarter. They're both three and out, or they're both punts. Cyclone defense have, has done a good job of containing loose central offense. Camrad sends Fedoni in motion. Hands off to Fedoni. It's a fumble. It's on the ground, on the carpet. Fedoni hops right back on it. Nick Bloom almost corralled that one. That would have been a big momentum shift there for the Cyclones. This is what we're used to seeing week one. Both offenses and defenses trying to work out the kinks. Third and 13. Cyclones looking for a stop. Head coach Justin Camrad will call a timeout. Play clock was at 15, so there must have been some confusion on the field. Once again, it is senior night here. Seniors got uh, introduced for cross country, band, cheerleading, and they also got introduced for football tonight. And here are this year's Cyclone seniors. Number two, Connor Frame. Number three, Joey Moser. Number four, Ashton Lyon. Number five, Luke Musage. Number nine, Nick Bloom. Number 10, Joseph Faw. Number 23, Will McLaughlin. Number 32, Lucas Stanley. 34, 54 is Jamison Beaker. And that is just to name a few. Get back to naming them in just a second. Both teams come back out on the field. Third and 13, biggest third down of the game. Cameron looks to his left. And miscommunication there from Camrad and Lofton as Lofton ran three yards deeper than what Camrad, Camrad thought he was gonna run. Quick curl and they're on different pages. Bad three downs there for Lewis Central. Humple got bottled up. Ball was muffed. And miscommunication between Camrad and Lofton there on that last play. So that'll bring on the punt team. Curran back deep to receive. This one is a kick that will hit Brad Curran. It hits Brad Curran right in the chest. And I think Curran got back on it. Yes, he did. The Cyclones are lucky and come up with a break there. That could have been a bad deal right there. Titans would have got the ball at about the 10 yard line, but instead Curran's able to jump on that one and recover it. So, that, so the Cyclones will be set up at the 10 yard line where they will try to march 90 yards down the field. See if they can get something going. Run game hasn't been working out for them very well tonight, but their pass game has been sure good. Lewis Central bringing the blitz. Cyclones one-on-one -on -one coverage, and that should be a flag. He never turned. And a lot of contact there, no flag on the play. I am in the booth, not down on the field. But from up here, that looked like a lot of contact. So Cyclones will start over with second and ten. As they have trips right. 
one receiver to the left is Connor Frame, one on one coverage. Casper Bauer looks right, gonna deliver this one to William Kankel in the flat. William Kankel is gonna gain eight yards on the play. That'll set up third and two. Cyclones. Be nice if the Cyclones could uh, convert this third down so they wouldn't have to punt it. Give the ball right back to the Blue Central Titans. It also gives their defense a little bit of a break unless you play both offense and defense. You're not getting any breaks. Cyclones will come out. Three in the backfield. One receiver on each end. Casper drops back in the pocket. Going to deliver this one on the flat to William Kinko, and Kinko can't hold on to it. So that one will be incomplete. Cyclones have to punt this one away as it is fourth and two. Steven Linen comes onto the field. Punted a, this is his third time punting. And he's had a, two good punts, one inside the five and one inside the 15. So we'll see what he can do here. Cyclones rush to the line as they only have three seconds to get it off. Linen with a high kick in the air. Fair catch is called by Fedoni, and he fields it at the Cyclone, or at the Lewis Central 47-yard line. And that's where the Titans will come back onto the field and start their drive. And that will also be the end of quarter number three. Lewis Central Titans scoreless in the third quarter. The Harlan Community Cyclones tack on one touchdown to the scoreboard. Your score is 22 to 14 in favor of the Lewis Central Titans. And we'll see what the Cyclones could get started here in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back after a short break. You're watching Cyclone Football on HLTV, Channel 15. Programming brought to you by these great sponsors. Clark Arnhold State Farm Insurance and Financial. Keith Motors. Quick RX Pharmacy, Cyclone Lanes, Shelby County State Bank, United Bank of Iowa, Holly Jones Funeral Homes, KNOD Radio, Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance, and the Peterson Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex. Back on HL TV channel 15. And the Lewis Central Titans will begin their drive at the 47 yard line and they swapped ends of the field. And this one's delivered in the flat to Fedoni. Fedoni gets loose on the right side and picks up enough for the first down. Pick up of 14 on the play. Fedoni, when I say the name Fedoni, uh, Thomas Fedoni played for Lewis Central last year. He committed to Nebraska, University of Nebraska, and he's now playing football there. there. So this is his cousin. His name's Lucy Fedoni. Camrad hands this one off again to Jonathan Humple. Humple up the middle. He's got a lot of running room. Humple to the five. And gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Titans. Humple up the middle with a lot of real estate. Bounces out to the right side. 
and will find his way into the end zone. Still 11 minutes and 18 seconds left to go. In the fourth quarter, bring on the PAT team. Boston Hensley on to kick this one. Snaps good, holds good, and the kick is up and through the uprights. Your score is now 29 to 14 in favor of the Titans. And we'll see what the Cyclones can get started here. As they'll begin their drive after this kick. And we'll take a little bit of a break here. We'll be back for the Lewis Central Titan kickoff. You're watching HLTV on channel 15. We're back on HLTV channel 15. As the Titans get ready to kick this one away to Joey Moser and Luke Musage, who is back deep to return for the Cyclones. Momentum has shifted back over to the Titans after that scoring drive by Jonathan Humple, who scored the touchdown, and this kick is not going to be returnable. It was a low line drive kick. thought maybe Joey Moser could have returned it, but it ends up in the end zone for a Cyclone touchback, for a Lewis Central touchback, and the Cyclones will come out onto the field and get the ball at the 20 yard line. Aiden Hall is back on the field for the Cyclones. He was shaking up with the cramp earlier. Went down once, went down again and came up limping. And he's back out there. Casper Brower all alone in the backfield. Casper Brower looks left, delivers left to Aiden Hall, and that one's almost picked off. Aiden Hall is not able to corral that one. Good defense there by number three, Duncan. Brings up second and 10 from the Cyclone 20 yard line. Jacob Birch, Joey Moser, Aiden Hall, close side of your screen. And Tegan looks that way and it's completed to Jacob Birch and Jacob Birch takes a big hit but he gets right back up. And that's enough for a Cyclone first down. Great job there by Jacob Birch to hang on to that one. Although he did get popped on the play. Cyclones get new personnel onto the field. Joey Moser is now going to be the running back back there with Tegan Casper Bauer. Casper Bauer looks to his left, delivers to his left to Jacob Birch with another catch. Birch gets hit at the 39 yard line. Not enough for the first down. But that brings up second and one. Cyclone's been doing a heck of a job battling back here, trying to gain the lead for the first time in this game. They're down by 15 right now. They have 10 minutes and 11 seconds to change that. Casper drops back, looks to his right, can't find a receiver, delivers over the head of Jacob Birch. Really nothing there. So the Cyclones will have a third and manageable, third and one, as they might run it here. 
just to get that one yard fullback dive has been 50-50 for him tonight. It's worked out sometimes for a gain of five to 10, and it's also worked out for a loss of three to five. It looks like the uh, looks like there's a car that has its lights on out to behind the north end zone, so the referees get that taken care of. Cyclones are uh, will huddle back up. Asper Bauer all alone, blitz comes, pass is complete to Aiden Hall for the first down. Hall complete, completed the pass at the 46 yard line. That'll move the chains. Cyclones have been doing a nice job of that tonight, moving the chains, especially with the pass game. Pass game has been really working out. Casper Bauer again all alone. Drops back, delivers this one off his back foot to Jacob Birch. Jacob Birch with his third consecutive catch on first down. And that sets the Cyclones up for a second and one. Empty backfield once again. Casper Bauer looks to his right, delivers it to Joey Moser. Joey Moser over the middle of the field. Has some running room and a lot of real estate. Looks like he lost the football, but ground may have forced him losing the football. And that is well enough for the first down. Wyatt Hatcher on the tackle for the Lewis Central Titans. Casper Bauer and Kinkle in the backfield. Hall in motion. Casper Bauer delivers this one to Jacob Birch who high points the ball. That's a fourth consecutive catch for Jacob Birch on first down, Birch with all nice catches there. Jacob Birch is making a living out here today. At least on this drive. This is Jacob Birch's first game starting at receiver. Asper Bauer looks to his left, delivers on a quick slant to Connor Frame. Connor Frame corrals the ball, tucks it close to his body, and is able to make the catch. And it's enough for another first down. We'll see if the Cyclones will go back to Jacob Birch for the fifth time on first down. Empty backfield once again, fourth consecutive time. Gasparro looks to his left, one-on-one -on -one to Connor Frame. Throws it up there, jump ball to Connor Frame, and Connor Frame comes down with it. Touchdown, Cyclones! Connor Frame mosses Duncan and is able to haul that one in for a Cyclone touchdown, and that's six on the board for the Cyclones. Amazing job there by Casper Bauer to give Frame a chance on that 50-50 ball. Looked like it may have been over, underthrown, and as Connor Frame looked to come back to it, but he corralled that one over 
Duncan. Now that'll bring the PAT unit on for the Cyclones. Steven Linen's kick is up and good. Score now is 29 to 21. Lewis Central still with the lead. Lewis Central's had the lead all game long. Cyclones are looking to change that here in this fourth quarter. Cyclone defense came up last season big in these clutch moments. Looking to do it here once again to beat a number three seed Lewis Central in the 4A rankings. Cyclones came in at number one in 3A rankings this year after they made it to the Dome last year and lost in the championship game against North Scott, 30 to six. Cyclones playing very well for their first game. Linen, kick this one away. Great kick there by Linen, and this one goes into the end zone for a touchback. No chance to return that one. Linen has done a tremendous job here tonight as he has made all of his PATs, all three of them. He's had three punts, and all of his kicks this evening have went into the end zone or out of the end zone for a touchback. That brings on Braden Lofton once again. Correction, Braden Camrad hands this one off to Humple. Humple gain a couple yards on the play. Good job by the Cyclone linebackers to stuff him there. Jamison Beaker on the tackle. Jamison Beaker, one of the seniors here on senior night. He's done a tremendous job the past two years for the Cyclones. Looking to finish it off strong here in his last season. This one's handed off to Humple again, and Humple gets wrapped up. Glaufen on the tackle there. Well, McLaughlin last season had 70 tackles and 12.5 tackles for a loss. Last year he played a little bit at tight end, and he was ama an amazing tight end. But this year, Todd, head coach Todd Blatt thought it would be better to stick him at fullback, running back. So that's where he's been playing tonight. Big third and four here. They hand it off to a... Humple again, Humple with some running room, and Aiden Hall does a great job leveling his shoulder there. Good heads up football there. That's what you like to see at the high school level. Good heads up football. Make sure no one gets injured. That way it'll translate to college. Titans are looking for a long drive that will melt the clock down. Right now the clock is at 4 minutes and 40 seconds. Camrad in the shotgun formation. And that's a fumble ball on the carpet and it's picked up. The Cyclones recover it. The read option for Camrad and Humple is not good and the ball ends up on the carpet. Looked like Jamison Beaker 
on the recovery. So the Cyclones, momentum shift. Shall the crowd get on their feet there? Well, definitely hype the crowd up. And the Cyclones will take over on offense at the 32-yard line. Cameron and Humpel on that last play. Miscommunication. Empty backfield for the Cyclones. Casper Bauer drops back, delivers it to Joey Moser, and Moser hauls this one in. Moser will have a nice gain on the play. Good gain of eight yards. Cyclones got everything going for him right now. They have four minutes to get into the end zone. And if they get into the end zone, score six, they'll still be down by two. So they're going to need a two-point conversion. Casper Bauer looks towards Frame, Connor, Frame! Touchdown, Cyclones! Connor Frame running a nine route, and Casper Bauer with a beautiful dime. Ends up in the hands of Connor Frame, and the Cyclones are on the board with another six. Cyclones are starting to make a comeback. And it looks like they sent the PAT unit on. And they took the PAT unit off. And it looks like they're going to try to go for two here. Cyclones still have all three timeouts. Titans have two timeouts. 27-29. Titans still have the lead. Casper Bauer under center, sends Joey Moser in motion. Casper Bauer drops back, looks to his right, can't find anyone, finds Jacob Birch. Jacob Birch in the back of the end zone, running a, running a two, and Jacob Birch will catch that one. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to announce it is a tied ball game at 29. The Cyclones with the first tie since it was zero to zero and are looking to control the game. All momentum towards the Cyclones, everything going right for them. As you can see, the Cyclone fans are on their feet Cyclones last drive consisted of a Braylon Camrad fumble, tried to hand it off on the read option to Jonathan Humple, dropped it, ball was on the turf, Jamison Beaker came up for the Cyclones, said I'll take that from you. Then the Cyclones started their possession at about the 35 yard line, with a few big plays here and there. Connor Frame ended up in the end zone for a 20 yard completion. And the Cyclones were still down by two. We got the two point conversion, converted in the back of the end zone to Jacob Birch. Now the Cyclones and Titans are all tied up at 29 and Steven Linen on to boot this one away and another beauty, but that one's gonna stay in play. Fields it at the five yard line. Looks like Fedoni on the right side will take it out to the 21 yard line. So only one more yard if you would have, if it, the ball would have ended up in, a, in the end zone. And the Titans take the field. Camrad and the Humple hope to have a better series than they did the last time. Ended up with a fumble. Cyclone defense looking to clutch up. Over the middle of the field to Braden Lofton. Lofton gets tripped up by number 32, Lucas Stanley. And he has enough for the first down. 
Last year, the Cyclones and Titans played two times, both at Merrill Field, and the Cyclones won both of them 28 to 10 and 21 to 14. The year before that, it came down to a nail biter at Merrill Field, and the Cyclones got the win. This one's going to be handed off up the middle to Jonathan Humple. Humple will gain three yards on the play. Alex Munson and Zane Bendorf on the tackle for the Cyclones. Camrad looks to his left, delivers it to his left, and gets hit immediately by number 10, Joseph Faw. There's a flag back in the backfield. Head official threw the flag. He's going to go over to a fellow official, check to make sure they have the right call. You got a long meeting here between the officials. Make sure they get it right with only two minutes and 34 seconds to play. And it's going to be holding on the offense. Holding on the offense. It is going to be, the ball is going to, the ball was going to be at the 35 yard line. And that'll move it back to the 30 yard line. And it will put it at the right hash. As Mr. Mueller said on the PA announcer, he said that it is a spot foul. So wherever the holding occurred, it will bring it back five yards from where it occurred. So it happened at the 35. Happened at the 30. Let's see. Happened at the 28. Moved him back to the 18. So they're all the way back at the 18-yard line. Second and long. Camrad looks to his left. One-on-one. -on -one. Will Newharth and number four, Blake Claiborne. And Newharth is fired up there. Camera had led him a bit too far. So that brings up third. And 23, first week of school started and I'm still trying to get my math figured out from last year. Play clock winding down, two, one, zero, and the Lewis Central Titans are gonna have to burn a timeout. Second timeout they've burned this half. So that puts them only with one timeout left. The Cyclone crowd is on their feet. It's good to see that. We'll be right back after this timeout. You're watching HLTV on Channel 15. Programming brought to you by these great sponsors. Clark Arnhold State Farm Insurance and Financial. Keith Motors. Quick RX Pharmacy. Cyclone Lanes, Shelby County State Bank, United Bank of Iowa, Holly Jones Funeral Homes, KNOD Radio, Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance, and the Peterson Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex.
We're back on HLTV channel 15. And it is third, 23. The Lewis Central Titans camera back deep, looking for a deep shot. He has all the time he wants. And Lucas Stanley and Brad Curran are on the coverage for the Cyclones. Intended receiver was Braden Lofton. And that is incomplete, throwing a few yards in front of him and way down low. Punt team will come on for the Titans. Snaps good. Punt. Punt bounces back towards the Cyclones. And the Cyclone will get the ball. <clears throat> the Cyclones will get the ball at the 50 yard line. Right at midfield, and they will start their drive trying to win the game. One minute, 56 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, what did I tell you at the beginning of this broadcast? Uh, this is going to be the best season opener in all of Iowa, and it has lived up to the hype. Casper Bauer and the Cyclones offense back onto the field. Casper Bauer rolls right, throws it deep to Joey Moser. Joey Moser tracks it down. Joey Moser is in the end zone. Joey Moser with the touchdown. 50-yard completion. Joey Moser finds the end zone, and that's the best thing possible that could have happened for the Cyclones, and all the momentum has shifted back over in the Cyclones' favor. There is an injured Titan on the play. That is who was in coverage against Joey Moser. And Joey Moser, he's a speedy little guy. He may be little, but he's got some speed to him. And he showed it. It was on display there. So Joey Moser finds the end zone, and Casper Bauer finds Moser. Cyclones now have the lead, 35-29. They'll go onto the field for a PAT. The Cyclones do bring the PAT team onto the field. Gunnar Schmitz, snapper, Brad Curran, holder, and Steven Linen is your kicker. Snaps good, the hold's good, and the kick is up and good. Steven Linen. Cyclones in control for the first time this evening. 36-29, a minute and 48 seconds left to go. And this has been an impressive comeback from the Cyclones. Game started at 0-0. Titans strike first, 14-0. Cyclones got into the end zone to make it 14-7. Then the Titans scored another touchdown in the first half. And went for the PAT, fumbled the snap, but got a pass delivered to Lofton to complete the two-point conversion. So at halftime it was 22 to 14 or 22 to 7 and now the score is 
36 to 29 Cyclones in control. Steven Linen kicks this one away. A big boot from Linen, and that one is going to be a touchback. Great job there by Linen. Steven Linen has been solid all night for the Cyclones. This is what Friday nights are for. Under the lights tonight. Lofton back in the pocket, pressure comes. He scrambles out to the right. He throws this one downfield. Braden Lofton is wide open and he drops it. Braden Lofton. Braden Lofton there. Just drops that one, and he could have been still running by now. But there's a flag down at the 25-yard line, and we have ineligible receiver downfield, number 7,200, Dale. Jeez. He was seven yards downfield. 300-pounder, he just wanted a touchdown. He said, give me the ball. That puts the Titans back five yards at the 15 yard line. 15 yards to go. For the first down. Minute and 40 left to play. Lofton looking to the right, rolls out to the right, has all sorts of time, now the pressure comes and he delivers this one to Jonathan Humple. Humple puts on the brakes. Humple gets free to the middle of the field. And a good tackle there by number 36, Matthew Sorfenden, a sophomore for the Harlem Community Cyclones. And the Titans obviously going no huddle here with limited time. Tick tock goes the clock. Lofton rolls out to the right. Once again, pressure comes. And it looks like there was holding on that right side. It looks like it's number 13, Curtis Witt, was holding number 23, Will McLaughlin. Otherwise, McLaughlin would have laid the boom on Camrad. And that is what the call is going to be, holding number 13 of the offense. And that puts them back even further. And the Lewis Central Titans are not doing too well right now. This is a big penalty because it is a spot penalty. And this moves the Titans back to the 24-yard line. 26 yards for a first down is what they need. First and 26, minute left, one minute warning. Cyclones looking to get away with this one in the comeback. Lofton looks to his right, one-on-one -on -one coverage to the left. Pressure comes from Will McLaughlin. Will McLaughlin and Jamison Beaker on the play. And that was a short pass. We have a flag that comes from the head official. And we'll see what the call is here. Might be, the only thing I can think of is late hit on the quarterback, but we had looked from up here, it wasn't a late hit, so they might end up picking this one up. But we'll see what they do. Yep. Personal foul, late hit. And you hear the booze coming from the uh, Cyclone crowd. They didn't like that call. And 
Coach Ty Blatt didn't like that call as well. So the Titans just had third and Titans just had third and uh, 26. Now that's going to be an automatic first down. The psych or the Titans will have the ball at the 39 yard line. 46 seconds left. Camera back in the pocket. Pressure gets to him. Beaker right over the middle of the field and <laughs> Lofton drops it once again. That's his second drop this drive, and they both could have been big plays. He could have ended up in the end zone. Doesn't look like the clock started on that play, so the officials will meet. So the refs will reset the clock to 41 seconds instead of there being 46. No time ran off during that play. And the uh, clock will not run until the snap because of the incompletion there by Lofton. Second and 10. Amrad out to the right and way overthrows an intended receiver of Jonathan Humple. The Titans can't get anything going here late. I bring up third and ten. 36 seconds now to go. Crowds on their feet. They're ready for another cyclone stop. Camrad, shotgun formation, drops back, looks to his left, delivers a strike to his left to Lucy Fedoni. Lucy Fedoni over the middle of the field, catches that one. And that is enough for the first down, so the time will stop during the first down as the moving of the change. And here we go, the clock will start. 22 seconds. Time is winding down. They need to snap the ball. They need to go deep here. Camrad, a little strike out to the left. And that is enough for a first down. And he gets out of bounds. Smart play there by number four, Blake Cyborn. Got the first down and got out of bounds. So the time will stop. The Titans do have one timeout left. So they could deliver a quick strike over the middle of the field. And then call a timeout and have enough time for another play. They reset the clock to 10 seconds. Camrad back in the pocket, sends Humple in motion. Camrad drops back, pressure comes. It's delivered over the middle of the field. Number seven, Wyatt Hatcher with the catch. And he'll be down at the 15 yard line. And the Titans will use the timeout. Exactly what I was talking about, a strike over the middle of the field. Just gotta make sure you get down before, uh, before the time expires. Otherwise that'd be the last play of the game. Titans do go ahead and take their final timeout.
cyclones in the control seat here. <clears throat> They came back. They had their, kept their heads up the whole game. And now they're looking for it to pay off right here. Cyclone defense comes back onto the field. Hoping to get them stopped short of the goal line. Everyone in attendance here got their money worth. Cyclones looking to start the season off 1-0 There's not a person sitting in the whole entire crowd everyone's on their feet Camrad drops back pressure comes up the middle Camrad delivers a strike and it's caught It's incomplete incomplete is a call incomplete is a call and the game is over It looked like Braden Lofton caught that but no, he did not. It is incomplete, hit the carpet. And the Cyclones, 1-0 on the season. Great way to start the season. That last play there, Camrad, Camrad uh, delivered a strike over the middle. It was tipped by a Cyclone defender and almost landed in the hands of the Division I commit, Braden Lofton. Cyclones start off their season with a comeback. Comeback for the Cyclones. Losing to North Scott last year. And just like Coach Blatt said, they are out for redemption. And they got that here tonight. Cyclones will stay number one in the 3A rankings this week. Cyclone run game could not get started here tonight, but the pass game was very good from the Cyclones as they got that going early on. Great defense by the Cyclones tonight, especially in the second half. Only let the Titans score one touchdown. It is senior night, so congratulations to all them seniors who won tonight as they line up right now and are shaking each other's hands. Great show of sportsmanship there. The Cyclones pick up this win. Cyclones win 36-29 in a nail-biter. Comeback. Great way to start the season. 1-0. We'll see you next week when we play Grinnell. Jonathan North on the camera, and I am Brayton Scheckinger. Thanking you for watching, listening, being here with us for a Cyclone win. Thank you and good night. You're watching Cyclone Football on HLTV, where it's always great to be a Cyclone.